Hey y'all, Jen Cravasi from Jekyll Bates and it's Friday. I was gonna try and film a spray session on Thursday, yesterday. But that didn't happen because I'm fighting this nasty head cold, but at least today I don't sound like um or fud. As bad. It's not as bad today. So we're gonna give it a whirl. Yeah, you ever do this? I have no idea what this is. It's from Canada. I so I guess we're doing an unboxing too. And why is it? You guys hear that? Every time I try and film a spray session, dude across the street decides to fire up his horses. <sighs> Not that I don't love my motorcycle dudes. I do. Love my motorcycle dudes. Just not when I'm trying to film a spray session. And today's cool. Today's going to be cool because we're doing that. Right there. The succulent goodness. Snaked. On an S waiver. We're going to do a swim bait today. I haven't done a swim bait in a while. Um, I've been trying to get caught up on orders. So I've been doing more orders and fewer videos. But I need to kind of balance that out because I miss you guys. Um, but I want to know in the box. My package from Triple Eagle Vancouver has been delivered. Yes, I know. Because we're doing that right now. I don't, I don't know what it is. There he goes. He's only going around the block. Trust me. Him and his motorcycle gang, they only go around the block. So, oh, nope, he's not going around the block. This is, oh, cool, yeah, yeah, awesome. These are, okay, so these are, they're good. They swim well. These are those Boyd Ducket Blanks, uh, the Castaic Swims, the Glides, and they're very well weighted, and I was sent two from overseas weirdly because usually they take the tails off for this so yeah this is super duper cool thank you from overseas <gasps> and yes even better Raymond right on brother and an extra because when I got sent this little gem of goodness, which is the same as that, I'm, it's reggae sensimedia, folks. Oh, there we go. There we go. Ha. Stoked. Full of stoke. All right, so let me show you this under the light. This is a brown trout. Love how it came out. Sidetracked by some glide baits. All right, let me grab a glove. And uh, man, it's cold in Arkansas today, you guys. Not super stoked about that. But it's nice and warm in here. Life is good. Hopefully you guys are as excited about the end of the week as I am. Today, 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 we're going to do this swim bait pattern. Snakehead, juvenile snakehead. We're going to do it on this River to Sea S waiver. This is not a knockoff. It is a customer repaint. Hooks are in here. The tail is in there. The River to Sea eyes. This came unpainted, which I'm um, super, super. It's a paint it yourself. Um, number one trebles on these things and I believe is this a seven inch I don't know I think it's a seven inch it says so but I don't feel like peeling up this As a matter of fact I might be able to get it is a six inch six and three quarters seven might as well just say seven all right first thing we're gonna do is prime it up 
and I'm gonna the tail is pinned in here I'm not gonna do really much of anything with this tail I think I could probably lightly coat it with clear coat but it is somewhat flexible I'm gonna leave it alone um, if you look at the tail it'll trail down just a little bit but we should be able to get that on the on the back end of this I am going to use a stencil today probably going to use a couple of different stencils today move my coffee cup out yeah it's you know what it's like oh man I just got dang it well it'll build character it might come off just got white paint on my cup it's one of my favorite cups too it's from the salmon river this is from a very successful fishing year up in New York to which I have not seen the likes of since and I've been back a few times so hopefully next year will be a good year can limit out on some salmon I've got some opaque white loaded in we're just gonna go over it lightly and you can see that I am coming back just a little bit on the tail because I'll probably do just a little bit of detailing there I would imagine if it's a do-it-yourself I know the tail on the reproduction on the replicas you can clear coat so I would imagine if it's a do-it-yourself they would expect some of it it can be taped off as well to leave the tail clear I'm gonna do a little bit of crafty stuff with it so if you guys are playing along with the picture in the right hand upper right hand corner of the screen you'll notice that the bottom belly area is pretty white there's still some patterns that are going to be on it and as it goes up it fades to like a sand bone color so we're going to do the same thing just like normal I'm going to go light to dark we've done the white primer I'm going to add to the entire upper sides and back some very light cream bone color this is color that I've mixed myself you'll have to forgive me on this one because I do have a cold so if I, f I seem a little disconnected or I start talking weird it's only because my voice is trashed and my sinuses are killing me this is a detail burnt sienna wicked and those are the dogs it's been uh, rain and sleet here for a couple of days it's actually not doing that right now but my brown lab bless her heart she just goes she loses her mind when she's not able to play that's about as dark as I want to go on the top decent fade just a little bit on the top itself I've pulled out some airbrush createx dark brown just a little bit I don't want to go too dark because we still have to come back and run the uh, detailing on the pattern here but we're gonna get just a little bit on the face here just run that color out that should do it I'm okay with that fade for now we're gonna have a much darker color and I'm probably gonna mix some sepia with some black magenta for this one just to give it that darker brown tone but I really love the detail black magenta for the detailing okay so before we add any of the dark detailing in with this snakeskin stencil I've added just a little bit of pearlized white into this and what I want to do is I want to give this to, uh, just a good coat especially along the darker areas get it a little bit on the belly as well but just want to give it that pearl sheen 
and then we'll coat it one more time when we're done. And that's just gonna better represent the fish scaling and that pearl that you see when it swims. Most fish have that quality in their scales. Snakes, uh, snake heads are no different. And they're super slimy. I don't know if you guys have ever caught them. If you're not in the areas where they are, then it's a little bit different. You're like, uh, but it's, okay, so snakes, snake snakes, reptiles, they're not slimy at all. You would think, oh, snake, but actually it's not that bad. So like boas, completely smooth, dry texture. These things that have the boa snake skin pattern on them, snakeheads are super slimy fish. And if you've never caught one, you wouldn't know. But I've caught them. And I, when I lived in Maryland along the Potomac River, Madam Woman had them, um, all the estuaries and the brackish water where the where the bay all, it's all tidal but they're there super heavy so and they're fun to catch and they're actually pretty delicious to eat i don't know if you guys have ever eaten snakehead but they're good eating in the cup i have added and mixed in this cup about five drops of detail black magenta and one drop of detail sepia and that's these colors here it's color detail sepia 70 75 is your detail black magenta we're going to bring the pressure down. I was running about 38, 40. I'm bringing this back quite a bit. And the next part, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Pretty sure this is dry to the touch. I want to leave this in the holder. set that like that because I'm going to need a little bit of extra control on this stencil and the main pattern is going to be a little different Well, that looks pretty decent. I like that sitting right there. So I think what I'm going to do to help me out on this is I'm going to tape the sides of this down. I don't normally do that, but this is one long snakeskin pattern. It's also going to help me control and not try and hold on with one hand. Um, but laying this flat is going to give me the ability to tape down this large stencil. And I just, I'm thinking that that's probably the best way to handle it. I'll know before I get started here if I'm screwing this up or not. But I don't think I am. I have decided that what I'm going to do with this as I work this pattern through is I'm going to go over this on one side with one color first which is this mixture of sepia and um, detail black magenta. And I'm just gonna give this a general spray. And then I'm gonna load a darker color into this. And because this is absolutely still, it's going to be just fine if I go over this a couple of times, which is actually kind of what I want. I had to come out here and take a quick break. Dogs needed to go outside and man, this is, this is the mess. I'm talking about a rugby field. This is three dogs and continual rain. One of these days, I'm going to have a house on a hill and it's not just going to lay here. And it's going to be at the ocean. Because I miss the water. I mean, the real water, not lake water. Ocean water. Just saying. Now we are going to do the same thing the other side. Make sure I've got good flow. Perfect.
And I'm just running this down the entire stencil. And then you just want to come back, just put your hands lightly on this. Finish out that detail. I'm going to have to change the battery on this GoPro in just a second, but I want to go ahead and pull this up first. Show you what this pattern looks like on this side. Pretty good little representation of a snake head. Okay, now that we have the pattern done, on our S waiver here. I'm going to go ahead and take you in depth with what it is because it's going to make more sense and it's going to look a little bit easier on the camera for you guys to play along with on this than it is on this bait just because we're using a complete white background here. So I reloaded a little bit of the detail black magenta with a drop of sepia into the chamber here. I'm just going to lightly, I'm not going to do the entire scale because that, that will take a long time, but I am going to do enough of it to where you see exactly what I mean. We'll do the exterior too just to have some fun. All right, that should do. That's a, certainly a big enough area. So with something like this, I've got one color that's fairly, fairly dark as in the way of, of color, but it's not as dark as black. And if you look, now again, I used the stencil that I have, so it's not going to be this exact, but if you look at pictures of Snakehead on, on uh, Google, you're going to see a million different patterns that are similar, but each one looks a little bit different. It's kind of like a fingerprint. So... Just use the whatever you have that's available to you. Uh, there's plenty of now. I do on a smaller scale. I do have an actual snakehead pattern, um, but this this does just fine. Now we're going to come back and we're going to overlay this with a little bit more detail just to get the outlines done on this same piece of paper here. I want to bring this down just a little bit so you can see a little bit easier. And again, you want to make sure you have good flow. And by that, I mean, there should be barely anything coming out when you just ease back on that trigger, and then you should be able to get super duper thin lines like I'm getting here. I'll pull that in a little bit. It's, it's going to fuzz out because it's a GoPro, but you can see what I mean. You can just get really ridiculously thin lines if you have good airflow. And I'm running almost at 20. So there's plenty of air coming out of here. I'm running actually probably a little higher than I'd like, but just to show you trigger control, and it's just an ordinary auto eclipse. There's nothing particularly, I haven't done anything, haven't modified it, but it's clean. The biggest thing is if you keep this clean, you don't even have to take this tip off. It's gonna run true for you. You can get super skinny lines like that. So that's what we're gonna do here. And all I'm doing is I'm going to follow the parts that are not cut out and I'm going to run this right on the edge so that I'm actually laying the paint onto the stencil and not into the holes where the stencil is cut out. And you're going to see what happens. And I think I've showed this to you before, but I don't know if, how old it was or how crusty the video was, how sketchy it might have been. And then really all I'm doing is just following along the stencil and it does take a little bit of time. Slide down. That's why it's also important that you can tape down something like this if you lay your, your lure flat, if you have enough real estate to do a pattern like this. I like doing bigger stuff like this on musky baits too. Super fun or pike or walleye baits. And so far, knock on wood, but I haven't really gone into my Elver, Elmer Fudd speak yet. I took some, I, I use nasal spray when I'm trying to talk, if I have a video or something to do. There we go, I knew that would kick off in a second. 
I didn't really feel like stopping this camera because I'm in the middle of doing this and I want to do this while the uh, while the, this paint is in the chamber and fresh but that's it and then really you can kind of get in and just just really practice on detailing and if you have the paint that you can do this on and you can go a little bit faster really because all you want to do is make sure you're hitting the edges and when you pull this up it's going to be a separate tone where you've got completely different color and it also gives that depth that perception of depth which is what we have on here it's just a little harder to see because I have a little bit darker of a background up here because we went light on the belly to dark so it's there it's on both sides like that you just can't see it as prominently as I can when I'm sh demonstrating something like that on this and I don't know about you guys but that's cool looking so I love doing snakeskin stuff Now I know we just went through the split toning with two different colors, but you can apply the same principles in stenciling as you would if you were graffitiing a mural on a wall outside, if you're into that kind of thing, and, and I definitely am. I, that, that's, what I, that's my passion really, um, is, this, is the rattle cans. Um, but if you look at this, this is the bubble effects by our tool. I'm just going to pull up couple of these here. I'm going to tape everything down together so that the paper and the stencil is taped. And if you're using, you want to do like the, I don't know if you guys can see it, I'll show it to you. Here it is. If you want to do like multicolored, realistic looking bubbles, like if you're doing your kid's wall or you want to do something other, this is just the basic principles of working with dimensional colors that make it look 3D. So on this, if you're working on a light background as opposed to a dark background, you already have your white there. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that you can do this. I'm going to work with a medium tone and then add a little dark on top of that and then I'm going to add a little bit of light on top of that. So I'm going to pick out, this is a detail blue-green. I'm running this right around, and I, again, I'm not being super careful with this. Really, truly, you don't even have to hit the entire bubble because you're going to be adding different colors and that's going to add into that layer effect just enough and you can get a little bit darker on some of them or you can kind of come in from the bottom there and work that way and we're going to do one continual shot on this so I'm just going to show you how I would do it in real time and try and talk as best as I can in between just a little extra tip on stenciling tips and tricks for the day almost like a twofer but it's not Tuesday if you guys like that two for format that I'm putting out on Tuesdays, leave me a comment in the description below because um, I would certainly love to keep doing it for you guys. I'm going to add a really dark, this is that deep blue color. And that's way too much paint. Blow some of that out. Sounds like there might be a little piece of goob in there. That's all right. And this definitely, you just kind of randomize how you're spraying it. Ugh, I don't like that at all. Definitely have something in there. So we've gone mid-tone, right in the middle of the road. That blue green and now I've shot dark on top of that randomly no real pattern if you've been watching what I've been doing and now I'm going to do the lightest blue that I have which is this opaque 
real light. This is that sky blue. Bring the pressure back down. And this, we're going to go more edges on the bigger stuff. The smaller bubbles. Leave those bigger bubbles darker. And just edges around here. And you can get it done in a fairly quick bit of time. Okay. Shoot that out. Always, this is the trash can that I dump everything into. Actually kind of looks cool at the end of the day sometimes. Now if you're looking at the way a bubble has a little bit of a angle to it, because bubble is three-dimensional in the real world, then we're going to shoot from an angle. Opaque white is our last color. Ugh, I'm going to have to clean that afterwards. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm coming in at an angle. So I'm really not hitting everything, just like I would do if I'm running mesh. I'm going to pull this up because this has got a little bit of a jagged edge to it. And then just angle this in. So that when you pull this up, what you got, hopefully I've done my job right. is a very three-dimensional, multicolor set of bubbles. And there you have it. You can see the tone, you can see the angle, you've got some intermediate kind of depth and layering to that. Split tone, multi-tone. And that is the tips and tricks for the day. I was saying earlier that I've got the coolest eyes and I was just thinking about putting the coolest eyes on here, but but, folks, people, my fish heads, it came with eyes. It came with eyes. And I almost hate to do it. I mean, I love you, River to Sea. Don't get me wrong. I am a big proponent of your products, especially the real Whopper Ploppers. So I cannot, oh my God, really? Can you just wait till I'm done? Why not? He's an old man. You got to give him credit. He's 16. All right, but I'm going to work just for a minute, okay? A little drop on that side. A little drop on this side. Get that nice and happy. Close the lid. No, that's not going to let me use tweezers. Okay, side number one, just flip it, do side number two. Just lay that in, it's, it's almost anticlimactic because I had all these cool ideas for what custom eyes I was and I you know but that's okay um, it's it's a clients it's not mine that I would be doing as an immediate sell but uh, super stoked with how this came out good pattern on it let me show you what I do in the way of clear coat how to get it on this bait just another quick tip between baits that I'm working on I always keep a little bit of cleaning solution in my chamber just to keep it from drying out. 
and make sure I get any gook off of here for my next trick. <laughs> it's actually not really a trick. What I've done is I've taken some of these clamps that uh, I got when I got some of the hard stencils, but if you have a small clamp, just any kind of a clamp will do as long as it'll hold your bait and that's what you want to do. You want to test it before you actually stick this on in there and so you want to make sure that this is gonna not go anywhere. But what I've done is I've fashioned some wire, some galvanized wire, around this clamp, crimped it down with my pliers, making sure that this thing is not going anywhere and it's not. But we just want to make sure that we have this in an upright position. We want to bend this over like that because what's going to happen is I am going to hang it tail up, nose down, and it's going to hang like that. So I can actually put that on there or if I really want to get crafty, I can wrap this once. Just it's not going to go anywhere, but the gravity of this, once it gets in there, it's just going to hang straight down like that. And then you can put your drip wire in your nose. Which means that I'll be able to dip this, but not all of it, just part of it. So let's show you how I do that. Let me grab some scrap paper. This will do. I'm just going to look at my bubbles while I do this. Now, the first thing we need is a flat brush and a decent flat brush, not, you don't want the cheapest one that you have and I don't need one that's super, super big like that. And if you are doing it, just kick the dust out of it if there's any dust. You don't need to do that for a long period of time, but you kind of want to work a little, little faster. Oh, almost forgot, got to sign the bait. Got to sign off on it. Uniball Vision Elite, folks. You know what? I really like writing 20 a whole lot better than I like trying to write the number 9. For some reason, 1-9 just didn't feel right all, like all year. I just never felt comfortable writing 1-9, but I love writing 20, so maybe that's a good omen. Uniball Vision Elite. Give that a quick little heat set over here. Now, all right. Now with this, I'm gonna brush this whole tail spe uh, section. I'm gonna leave the tail as it is. That tail is going to get chewed on anyways, folks. Fish start hitting this, uh, there will be a fair amount of bites that will hit that tail. But really, all I'm doing in a fairly quick manner is thoroughly coating. And you can get just a little bit. You just don't want to get into the, the joint area where the wiring is. But you can certainly get a little bit on that and then just make sure that you're coating the entire thing so work with good light make sure you're not missing any spots just completely coat this I do recommend gloves so you don't get stuff all over your fingers even brush strokes Just give it a once over, make sure that all the areas are covered that you're working with. And you kind of have to move a little quick because this KBS does start to harden and get tacky within a few minutes, which is why, at least with the older formula, if you left the lid off for any period of time, it was going to skin up on you. Um, this stuff seems to be much better at performing and staying consistent with the big word viscosity with the thickness all 
And there we go. And there's one side. Now I've got a little piece of fiber, the brush hair that's coming off. Now with the second side here, I am going to dip it, but you can't dip the entire thing. So on this top area, I just need to brush that down to a certain point. I'm going to cover about a half an inch to an inch, probably closer to an inch. And just work all the way around. And I'm not going to go on the inside of this side. And just keep on working. And there we go. And now I can take the rest of this and just dip it. Make sure I don't have any blotches that are thicker than the rest of it. You just want even layers, like I was saying. I can bring this down. And just dip it gently. And let that drip for a second. I've got a drip wire to hang out of here. I'm going to bring this entire jar over. Set that off to the side. Use that clamp. And voila! It's drying and dripping. And we'll show it to you like we always do at the end of the video or in the next video. You're going to see the dried version of it. I always make the effort to do that for you guys. I hope I've been able to teach you guys a few things. I really had fun showing you a little bit of depth and layering with stencils. How to do split tone and multi layers. Uh, love doing this snakehead pattern. One of my favorite, favorite patterns. And I think it looks pretty good on this River to Sea S Waver 168 or 68, something like that. Y'all know what I mean. Thanks for hanging out, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace, love, and fishing. Mm -hmm.